And I want to start by telling you about the historical development of quantum theory as this history is told by physicists today. Now the so-called history that physicists believe is so absurd that I've decided to present it to you as a fairy tale, which it is. Fairy tales are sometimes read to children at night until they go to sleep. Well, this fairy tale serves the same purpose. It has put physicists to sleep for the past 70 years. Here it is. Once upon a time, there was a land of happy physicists. They were happy because they made rapid progress in understanding the world around them. Above all, they were happy because they believed in an intelligible, lawful universe that was entirely open to the human mind, waiting to be discovered. Tragically, this belief turned out to be based on nothing more than naivety and ignorance. One day the physicists began observing the world more carefully, performing more experiments, gathering more facts, and they made the most startling and profound discovery of all time. They discovered that the world is not lawful or intelligible. At the most fundamental level, it is ruled not by causality, but by sheer chance. And this wasn't all. The new experiments proved that the basic constituents of matter don't even exist with specific properties until we observe them. They pop into existence when we measure them. Now even though these new discoveries were very exciting, the physicists felt sad that their happy predecessors had been wrong. After all, they thought, it would be nice to live in a world of physical things that really existed with definite properties things that always acted in accordance with their properties. But alas, there is no such world. No matter how much the physicists might wish for it, facts are facts, and the scientific objectivity required them to accept the conclusions that followed from the observations. And the sad truth is that the physical world isn't. It isn't real, it isn't causal, it isn't intelligible. As lovers of truth, the physicists not only had to accept this new discovery, they had to acknowledge it as their crowning achievement and the most profound insight in the history of science. In the end, the physicists all gave each other Nobel Prizes and lived happily ever after. At least they were happy when it, whenever anyone observed them. The rest of the time they remained in an indeterminate state. Now, that is the official history, as presented in thousands of books and lectures today. Nearly every physics professor in the country believes that fairy tale. One could almost say that believing it is a prerequisite for getting a job at a university. So, is it true? Well, you should be suspicious. Consider the claim that the observed facts have refuted identity. That is, refuted the fact that to be is to be something. And that the observations have refuted causality, the fact that an entity's actions are determined by its nature. Now let's say that we doubt this claim. So we ask the quantum physicists, are you saying you've seen an entity without identity, a something that was nothing in particular? And if you have, what did it look like? Well, the physicist concedes he hasn't actually seen such a thing. He knows they exist, but every time he looks at them, they turn into something specific. His act of observation gives them identity, but they were nothing in particular before he looked. And because of this lack of identity, he is forced, against his will, to renounce causality. The actions of an entity cannot be caused by its nature because it hasn't got one. Now, just to give you your money's worth for this course, I've decided to go out on a limb here. I hereby guarantee you that there are not and never will be any observations that cast any doubt on the ideas of identity and causality. Thank you. I can't be too proud of that, but <laughs> as I consider it self-evident. 
Every observation is an observation of specific things acting in strict accordance with their specific natures. There's nothing else to observe. That exhausts the inventory of the universe. There are no observations, no experimental results that could possibly explain why the physicists who developed quantum theory rejected identity and causality. We can know in advance, without even studying the history, that the rejection was based on false philosophic premises, not on any experiments. Now, this conclusion is confirmed when one studies the actual historical development of the theory, rather than simply accepting the fairy tale on faith, as most phys physicists do. And what we find is that, Germany, that German physicists emphatically rejected causality before the development of quantum theory. So that was a little excerpt on the fairy tale of quantum physics as given by David Harriman from a, a lecture titled The Philosophical Corruption of Physics. And I'll leave a link in the description. It's actually about a six-hour presentation, so for any of those cosmology slash philosophy nerds like myself who might actually be interested in listening to the whole thing, uh, you know, I found it very fascinating indeed. Obviously, there's kind of a lot of bones to pick through <laughs> to get to the meat. But um, I did find it very interesting. Obviously, I, I agree with everything he says in that uh, excerpt, talking to, comparing it to a fairy tale. Uh, but it's interesting because even though he totally recognizes that in the, the 17th and 18th century, essentially his premise is that in the 17th and 18th century, you had these philosophers in Europe, such as uh, David Hume and Immanuel Kant, who basically came up with the, the philosophical presuppositions which were then injected into physics later through Mach, who was the physicist, but he had adopted these uh, Kantian philosophies. So he's coming right out and saying that it was a subversion from the start, and that all of the so-called experimental discoveries that came out of the 19th and 20th centuries were all predicated upon those presuppositions. At the same time, though, of course, he's uh, totally a, a fan of Newton and what he calls classical physics. So from his perspective, the whole, this whole jump occurred between proper causal Newtonian physics uh, into the, the bogus pseudoscience realm of, of quantum physics. Of course, I would take it a step further and say that Newtonian physics was itself, of course, based on a huge philosophical presupposition, and that false philosophical presupposition would be the Copernican principle itself. But that's probably best saved for another video, and I'll go into that more. And these two false assumptions, I think, kind of go in opposite directions, but it's an interesting thing that I hope to kind of get into and compare side by side in another video.